Good afternoon, friends. Happy Friday. <clears throat> Today, I am going to read to you the nonfiction book, Recycle, by the author Gail Gibbon. She has written a few other books that we've read this year. She wrote um, our book, Owls. She wrote The Life Cycle of the Frog. So she writes lots of nonfiction books. And this book is a handbook for kids of ways that we can reduce, reuse, and recycle so that there is less trash on our earth. Recycle by Gail Gibbons. More and more garbage? Every day people throw away more trash. As a world population increases, more people throw away more trash. When the author says the world population increases, that means when more and more people are living. Garbage trucks come to pick it up, but where does all this trash go? Most of it is hauled away to sanitary landfills. A landfill is a place where garbage is dumped in heaps from garbage trucks. Some sanitary landfills are lined on the bottom with a layer of clay soil covered with plastic. Here are some um, labels the author included. Here it says, Lachate, I'm not sure if I'm pronouncing that right, is a powerful substance that's produced when rotting garbage mixes with rainwater. Here we see decomposing trash. Here's clay. Here's that plastic lining. The lining of clay and plastic keeps that um, lichite from leaking into the soil and poisoning the soil because all this trash would really poison the soil. Bulldozers push the garbage into neat piles. Then they cover it up with dirt so that it won't smell and so that animals and bugs stay away. Most people don't want landfills near where they live. And besides, there is so much garbage now that in many places, there isn't enough room to bury all of it. Where can all this garbage go? One solution is to cut down on the amount of trash that we make. We can do this by recycling some of our garbage to make it into new things. Recycling means reusing materials instead of throwing them away. And in this picture, we can see people recycling plastic, cans, polyester, glass, and paper. So all these materials can be reused. Here's our first subtopic, paper. Here is a paper making machine. It takes a lot of trees and energy to make paper. In fact, people in the United States cut down 850 million trees to make paper products each year. When the trees are cut down, they are turned into wood chips. These wood chips are mixed with chemicals and water to make pulp. The pulp is spread out on a moving screen to make thin a thin layer of fibers. When the layer of fibers dries, it becomes paper. Newspapers, boxes, magazines, and many other things are made from paper. When these things are through being used, they shouldn't be thrown away. Recycle them so that they can turn them into fresh paper. Collect old newspapers and tie them up into bundles. Tie up old magazines too. Break down used boxes and tie them together. Most towns and cities have recycling centers where bundles of old paper can be dropped off. In some places, trash collectors picked up, pick up the bundles of paper and take them away for recycling. Or, if your city or town has a recycling pickup service, leave the bundles at the curbside, stacked neatly or placed in special containers. Old paper can be turned back into pulp and made into new recycled paper using less energy than it takes to produce new paper from raw materials or new trees. Recycling paper saves trees and forests, which make, which make oxygen and help keep the air clean. Saving forests protects the homes of many animals too. Class, here's our second subtopic. 
It takes lime, soda ash, and sand called silica to make glass. These three elements are mixed together and heated at a very high temperature to make a gassy liquid. Measured amounts, sometimes dyed, are dropped into forming machines where the liquid hardens to make bottles and jars. Many products come in glass bottles or jars. Sometimes when they are few through being used, they're just thrown away. It would take thousands of years for them to biodegrade, so decompose at a landfill. Instead, these bottles and jars could be reused. Recycle. So this talks about an object biodegrades when it is eaten away by the sun, the rain, and the wind, and by microorganisms, very tiny plants and animals. It takes about 3,000 years for a glass bottle or jar to biodegrade at a landfill. Instead, collect glass bottles and jars, rinse them out, and put them in a box or bag. Many bottles are returnable. A small deposit is paid when bottles are bought. When they are returned, the deposit is paid back. Most of the time, the bottles are sent back to the company that made them, where they are sterilized, that means cleaned, and refilled. Sometimes the bottles are recycled into new glass. So you can separate the deposit bottles from the other ones, bring the bottles back to your store to collect your deposits. You get a little bit of um, money for them. And you, the ones that are non-deposit, you can bring to a recycling center. Or if your city or town has a recycling pickup service, you just leave them at the curbside placed in a special container. It takes much less energy and creates less pollution to make new glass from old glass. The glass is crushed and remelted. Next, recycled liquid glass is poured into forming machines and stamped into new glass products. The sand, lime, and soda ash don't have to be dug again, which would waste precious natural resources and destroy forests and fields. We don't want to do that. Okay, subtopic three, cans. Most cans are made from aluminum. It takes many energy resources and creates pollution to produce pure aluminum. First, a, minim a mineral called bauxite is mixed with soda ash and lime. When the mixture is put under pressure, aluminum is left as a byproduct. Then the aluminum is heated and poured into molds to make cans. Many products such as soda and foods are sold in aluminum cans. Often when the cans are empty, they're just thrown away. It takes 500 years for an aluminum can to biodegrade, to break up at a landfill. But these aluminum cans can be reused, recycle. Collect the cans, rinse them out, and put them in a box or a bag for recycling. And here we see the ingredients to make the aluminum the lime, the bauxite, and the soda ash. Like glass bottles, many cans are returnable for a deposit refund. So you get a little bit of money when you return them to the store. After the cans are returned, they're sent to plants to be ground into small metal chips. These chips are melted down and made into aluminum bars, which are pressed into thin sheets of recycled aluminum. Here are the steps. Separate the deposit cans from the others. Bring the deposit cans back to your store to collect your little refund money. The other ones you can bring to your recycling center or put on your curb if your town provides that, which our city of Boston does. The sheets are then sold to, make, to can makers to be made into new cans. It takes much less energy and makes much less pollution to make new aluminum from old aluminum. Natural resources such as bauxite, lime, and soda ash aren't taken from the earth to be used. Fields and forests are left alone. Plastic. Plastic bottles, plastic bags, plastic plates, plastic containers, most plastic is made from molecules called polymers, which are divided which are derived from petroleum. The plastic is heated, sometimes dyed and poured into molds. 
A big problem with plastic is that it doesn't biodegrade. It can last forever. Instead of being allowed to fill landfills, litter roadsides, and harm wildlife, plastic can be recycled and reused again. Recycle. Collect and wash out plastic bottles. Rinse out and reuse plastic products such, such as plastic bags, plates, spoons, and cups. You're recycling them by reusing them again. Pick up plastic litter when you see it outside. Again, we have these steps. You can bring them to your recycling center. You can bring them back to the store to get a few coins back. Um, or if your city has a recycling pickup service, you can put it at the curb. Like glass bottles and aluminum cans, some plastic bottles can be returned for a deposit refund. These bottles will be sent away to be recycled into new plastic products. First, the old plastic is cleaned. Then it is chopped up, melted down, and molded into new recycled products. Recycling plastic saves natural resources such as oil and prevents pollution caused by, man by the manufacturing of plastic. All right, polyester. Many, <clears throat> many products are made from polyester, sometimes called styrofoam, such as cups, fast food packaging, and packaging materials. Some styrofoam is made using gases called chlorofluorocarbons. <laughs> That's a long word. Also called CFCs, these chemicals are harmful to people and animals. When they are burned, they create poisonous gases and also harm the ozone layer surrounding our planet. The ozone layer is a shield of gases that surrounds the earth and protects us from the sun's harmful rays. Unfortunately, it's cheaper to make new styrofoam than to recycle it and there are few useful products that can be made from recycled styrofoam. Plus, styrofoam is not biodegradable like um, plastic isn't. It can last forever. The more styrofoam that's used and thrown away, the more garbage that will sit in our landfills for years and years. So they're telling us try not to buy any styrofoam products. And if you do, try to recycle it. Use it again for something. Also, styrofoam can be dangerous to sea animals. It floats on the water and it looks like food. And when sea animals try to eat it, their systems can get clogged and they can starve to death. Pick up any styrofoam litter when you see it. If more and more people learn to recycle, there will be less garbage and our planet will be safer and a healthier place to live. Recycling can become a habit that is fun and easy. Recycle! And here we can see some facts. Each person in the United States throws about four pounds, throws out about four pounds of garbage each day. That's a lot of garbage. New York City alone throws out enough garbage each day to fill the entire Empire State Building. In one day, Americans get rid of 20,000 cars and 4,000 trucks and buses. This is a lot of trash. 14 billion pounds of trash is dumped into the ocean each year. 43,000 tons of food is thrown out in the United States. Each hour, people in the United States use 2.5 million plastic bottles. People in the United States throw out about 270 million tires every year. All the people in the United States make enough garbage each day to fill 100,000 garbage trucks. In only one day, people in the United States toss out 15,000 tons of packaging material. It takes 90% less energy to recycle an aluminum can than to make a new one. 65 billion aluminum soda cans are used each year. The energy saved by recycling a glass bottle instead of making a new one would light a light bulb for four hours. Every ton of paper that is recycled saves 17 trees. Only about one-tenth of all solid garbage in the United States gets recycled, so most of it is just garbage piling up. What can you do? Begin your own home recycling center. 
organize a group outing to a park or beach to clean up litter. Instead of using paper towels, use cloth towels, which can be washed and reused again and again. Before you toss six pack rings into the garbage can, cut all the circles with scissors so animals and birds can't get caught in them. Instead of throwing out some things that you don't want anymore, see if someone else could use them. Try having a yard sale. Keep a rag bag. Put old torn clothes in it and have a supply of rags to keep and you'll have a supply of rags to keep your house clean or for messy projects. When you go shopping, bring a cloth bag or a recycled brown paper bag instead of um, getting a new one at the store. Bring old books you don't want to your library. Maybe the library could use them or to our classroom. Save paper. Use both sides of every sheet of recycled paper. If more of us use recycled paper, there will be a bigger demand for it. And don't forget, recycle. The end. So readers, today what I would like you to think about is, what is Gail Gibbons persuading us readers? What does she want us to do? And what are her reasons? So I'll give you a clue. Her topic is she wants us to recycle. I want you to think about why does she want us to recycle? What are her reasons? And we'll talk about those next week. Talk to you later, friends. Have a great weekend.